Hey everybody, Fallout here. So here's the deal. I told Bife that I really needed his help for a video that I was putting together. I made it very clear that I needed his expertise and only he could help me with his game knowledge and uh, lore knowledge. Didn't tell him that we were recording for an April 1st video. He doesn't know what this video is going to be. Let's give him a call. So I really appreciate you being here with me today. I needed your game knowledge, right? I need your knowledge of the game. You're the only person who can help me right now. So the topic of today's video discussion is most fuckable raid bosses. I see why you needed me on this. <laughs> this, this is very clear lack of knowledge for a lot of people, which I alone can <laughs> You oh hold the key. If you don't want to get into certain, you know, nitty gritty, we can use your knowledge of lore uh, to determine maybe how good of a romantic partner each of these people might be. So we're going to start off with Emperor Callus. If you're looking at <laughs> marry, kill, this is this is definitely a situation. Yeah. Um, Gosh. Gotcha. Now, what makes yeah. you say that? Everyone knows Callus is about opulence, uh, about hedonism, about just all good things in life, and for a ah. short amount of time, that's fantastic. However, uh, Callus has had partners before, um, and in those instances, some of the partners where he's truly loved them, he has failed them. And it's one of his great tragedies and regrets, but it basically shows that in the long run, he's not a great partner. Yes, he would be down for everybody enjoying themselves, but it's also one of those things of realistically, if it's not quite conforming to the way that it could possibly be as grand as possible. It's very easy for him to then get very irritated and very angry, you know? Like there's literally a feast where people aren't as merry as they could possibly be and he gets mad at them in the law because he's like, what are we here for if not to enjoy this thing, you know? I completely understand where you're coming from now that we're here. Mm -hmm. You're right, all about the, you know, the lavishness. So I'm gonna put Emperor Callus in the F tier. We're going to move on to Atrax. Wow. Uh, Atrax. So she's in, she's in one of those weird positions where we don't actually know a lot about her. Yes. Her, by the way. Um, yes, she is a she. I did know that. So, yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah. uh, so the interesting thing about Atrax is that she has become an exo, but aside from that and her loyalties to Eremis, we really don't know too much more. I would mm. say, however, that uh, this is probably an F situation, right? Um, really? Okay. So, for one, the ability to create a multitude of copies of yourself creates interesting dynamics. Both I in a like good and where a bad this way. is going. <laughs> Think about it like this. This is not a long-term marry situation because how can you trust that they're not going to be out there with someone else? Oh, that mm -hmm. is a good point. You can have one at home, one at the club, right? Now, ha here's the thing. Maybe yes. you're down for that. Polyamory is absolutely a thing. Sure. Maybe it's not a deal breaker. For some, it may be. For some, it won't be. Point being, it's a dynamic you've got to take into account. According to old fallen religion, she's now a machine. She's ascended. There's a spark of divinity to her. Oh, so from okay. Fallen's perspective, this is like marry immediately. From our perspective, you need to take that societal bias in account and remember that, hey, maybe Atrax thinks of herself as better than most of the other Fallen at this point. Now granted, how Salvation, they've kind of rejected mm. that whole thing of the Traveler, so I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Either way, it just presents a really interesting load of dynamics. Just based on all of that and how confusing it is and the fact we don't actually know about a lot of her personality. Sure. Uh, I'd, I'd say this is probably a very clean F situation. Love you know, it. Probably good fun. Next, we have one that I'm sure a lot of people will be excited to hear your thoughts on. We're going with Rolk. Oh, oh, wow. This is a, uh, mm. Rolk is a kill situation. Ooh. And I know that that's incredible because of the fact that everybody's like, but the donkey kicks, clearly there's gotta be something there. Yeah, the, the way leg. that he struts around yeah. legitimately, this man's does not care. This man's does not care for anything or anyone. It's that point at which he has given up everything to nihilism. It's, I mean, you know, this 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 guy destroyed his own planet, killed his own family in a pretty gruesome fashion. And at the very end of it, he said he felt relief. And the reason behind all that is that he doesn't think any of that matters. He is literally so bound up in the witness's entire idea of the final shape. Yes, there's a joke in there, I realize now. But, you know, he's so bound up in the idea of the final shape. And, right. You know, nothing else in the universe matters that a relationship, whether it is short term or long term, does yeah. not matter to him. So I, I think this is very clearly something where if anything is going on there, you are at best a tool. You know, there's the worm god in the raid that's just un chilling underneath the totally. 
Yeah. Yeah, the big platform, the upended that you do the final boss fight on. Yeah. That's the Worm Mother Zeta. And basically, she is literally seen as nothing more than a tool. So that's the way that Rulk sees things. It really sees only itself, the things that aid it, the things that oppose it, and the witness. And that's all that's in its brain. So this is absolutely a kill situation. Like, Good call. I mean, yeah, yeah. some people might hear, oh, he would use you as a tool and be like, okay, I'm listening. But no, it's not that type it's of... It's not that it's kind, not of, that thing, kind right? of thing, right? Next up, we have... Nezarek. That's a very interesting one. How much of a fan of cake are you, Fallout? How much? Of <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> well, <laughs> you might have to, Maggie, cut this. I think personally, I would want nothing to do with this. I think this is one of, should we call it like getting thrown into the Vex network or something? Because I would want nothing to do with Nezarek. <laughs> some um, people, that might be an instant F tier. Absolutely, yeah, sure. for some people, and, I you imagine. you know, we don't judge that type of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. When it comes to it as well, you know, Final God of Pain, mm. that is definitely something where some people are going to uh, <laughs> appreciate that aspect right. of things. Having said right. that, it's not that kind of pain. This is the guy who has inspired a guardian to literally kill his own ghost and rip out his own eyeballs. Right. Like, you know, there's 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 no there's no fun pain here. There's none of that nonsense. To put it in a way that people might understand, uh, you would probably be in a situation where you'd be getting ready and you'd be like, "Okay, what's the safe word?" And then he looks at you and goes, "What safe word?" This is an unsafe partner in any regard. Like, doesn't matter what you're doing. If not in the kill pile, probably in the get lost in a vex network. Next up, we have Oryx, the Taken King. Definitely father material for those of you who are attracted to power. Uh, there is certainly something there. I think we might have our first marry on this list, honestly. I think that's a good call. First strong marry. Now, granted, perspective of the hive, right? So with their thing, love is war. It's very much one of those things that within the hive's dynamic and the way that ascendant hive are basically immortal, the familial love, for example, on the flip side sure. of things, that is displayed between Oryx, Savathun, and Zivor Roth, they regularly war with each other's broods because the idea is that it's a complementary thing because they make each other stronger by right. challenging each other. And that's the expression of familial love that they show. Equally, I imagine that you'd probably be looking at this other kind of love in that similar respect. You know, if you wanted to be someone who is at Oryx's side, you need to not only be strong yourself, but you need to be able to challenge him. Clearly, he's a father figure, you know? He is, Crota, yeah. not Chris. I mean, granted, exiled not Chris. Mm. Uh, both of his two daughters is not afraid to call his kids out on their shit. <laughs> has, uh, has, has, has thrown yeah. Crota into a, uh, into a Vex portal. For, for screwing up his throne world. Clearly cares a lot about family. Even, in fact, this is a little bit of lore, he breaks the sword logic by coming to avenge Crota. Like, Savathun points this out in Season of the Wish. It, it's the point where you can tell Oryx cares more about his family than he does about his rules. And that's, honestly, that's that's Marriage material, material right there. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, I'm probably going to butcher this pronunciation. This is a two for one entry. Ir Halak and Ir Anuk. Okay, so here's the thing, right? One of them is the Weaver, which I believe is Ur Halak, and the other is the Unraveler, which is Ur Anuk. For the Unraveler, it's all about breaking you down. For the Weaver, it's all about remaking you and turning you into something else for that reason. Whichever one is the Unraveler, which I believe is Ur Anuk, uh, kill. Whichever one is the Weaver, ah. which is all about building you back up. Uh, I'd say marry. Like, that's oh. both of them strong material when it comes to it. Next up, we have Galrin. Throw into the Vex network and nothing, well, nothing to do with them. Uh, <laughs> that was being so is, quick. You answered that yeah. like that. Yeah, no, it took me just a second to think of it. Uh, and here's Damn. the crazy reason for it, right? When the Cabal create genetic experiments like this, mm. uh, they imbue them with all sorts of memory and whatnot, but they've only been alive for a few seconds. So technically they have the memories, etc., of all the great warriors that they're based upon. They have that life experience, but they have nothing that truly defines them as their own personality. You know, in um, OG Leviathan, when the Cabal like jump out of the vats in oh, yeah. the Bard's encounter? Sure. The, 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 Basically naked up, uh, oiled up guys. Yeah, literally they've just been made. They've just been born. Really? I didn't know that. Like, it's 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 part wow. of the crazy thing of Cabal genetic technology. They have just been created and Galran was specifically made in that same fashion to hold hmm. the crown of sorrow. Uh, nothing to do with Galran. Uh, from the very beginning, had next to nothing of himself that actually made up who he was, but also, yeah, uh, the Crown of Sorrow has kind of screwed him up a little bit. I know? did read that, yeah. Yeah, he's yes. a little damaged goods there. 
It's it's not. You, you, you don't look. You don't you look know. at them and think I can fix him. You know. It's a horrible analogy, I think. But you have to go and look at them in the same way you look at someone from Aliens who's just been infected by a xenomorph, right? Like no. there is one fix to this. Oh and god! It's taking the crown off, which means killing them. Yeah. And uh, ultimately, it's you know this is like extracting a xenomorph from someone. They gon' die. Sure. You know, yeah. like kill is the more merciful thing. Yeah. Sure. Kill. All yeah. right, there we go. Next up, we have Crota, son of Oryx. So we said marry for Oryx, and Crota does have a family as well. He, he has does. four daughters. Strong familial bonds out here in uh, in Hive Nation. The other thing that's worth remembering is that whilst he was alive. I think there was a fair degree of like control, not in a negative way, but as in just sort of like stability over his group of hive. It's a little bit tricky to judge how his relationship was with his four daughters and how he was as a family man, but tentatively I'd say either smash or marry, you know? Oh, uh, okay. You think he would be, I mean, Crota seems like the type, like a no nonsense kind of smash, right? Yeah, relatively speaking, you know, he, he knows what he's here for. He's here for, in fact, you know what, maybe that is a good reason for Smash, because he does know that he's here for just one reason, and that reason is just to carry out whatever his dad wants. Based on what you've said about no nonsense, yeah, I think Smash. Good call. Next up is Iryut the Death Singer. There are so many jokes about um uh, about loud sex. <laughs> about being it. a screamer and a shrieker There's and... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's there's endless jokes about this right now. Um, <laughs> so true. Uh, and based and based on that alone, I'm gonna say uh, smash. Nice. Um, yeah. Mary. Yeah. If you're into that kind of, you know, you want them to hear it like two houses down, right? She's probably your gal for that. Uh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next we have. Oh, here's a good one. Shuro Chi. Now we could make the joke that. Guardians have been farming her for years, right? <laughs> this is going to sound really bad, but I would have to say this for most Awoken. I'm trying to remember how old Shirochi is. Uh, Cause, and this, keep in mind, this is the Awoken. So like Mara, easily a billion plus years old, if right. you're counting the distributory. Right? Very old, like, yeah. They are all ancient. Um, yeah, but they, do, but they, think... they age well though. It's, it's not even about that. It's about like the accumulated knowledge of everything, right? Like mm. if you're looking for depth of partnership, I think the Awoken are a very clear marry on a lot of these spectrums, right? Mm. Like, But Shurochi is taken though. Oh, we're talking taken Shurochi. Oh, well, I guess we could, well, I did mention, mm. uh, yeah, yes. uh, we're mm. talking yeah, about yeah, yeah. raid or dungeon boss. So this would be her in taken form. Yes, okay, that does change things. Mm. Uh, Immediately under the control of the witness, not really there. This is a straight up kill situation. Oh, or I, like I don't it. want anything to do with you. Like, this is not this is not really Shirochi at all. Like this is an empty husk true. of a person. So yeah. Gotcha. But in an alternate universe, I'll I'll give you the maybe a non-taken Shirochi could potentially be considered strong, for Mary material. Strong Mary. If not, like you here's the thing, man. If mm. if there's a category for occasionally show up with a bottle of wine so you can just chill and talk about things and be good friends, that's mm. a Shirochi category right there. Shirochi is the one you share tea with. Uh oh here's one. Okay, so we have six left. Uh Atheon. Unironically, I think thrown into the Vex Get network. Lost in the, the Vex guy, network. <laughs> yeah, the guy is obsessed with time, has no conception yeah. whatsoever of taking time for care in a relationship. Clearly Clearly really always has his mind somewhere else. I say his, it's, doesn't even really care. Doesn't really have much of a personality behind that thing. No. There's, you know, there's no connection yeah. right there, you know? Put him in there. best to smash, probably leave and forget it in the Vex network. Agreed. Now, this next one has not technically been a raid or dungeon boss yet. I'm kind of making some assumptions with this next one, but we have The Witness. I thought you were gonna ask this. My question to you as a lore expert because the witness is, correct me if I'm wrong, made up of an entire civilization. Does, How much are you into group play? Does this count as a gangbang? <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I damn myself by saying I think I actually know a little bit more about this, but I, let me contextualize that. I know a little bit about the way the witness works and functions and all that because I just did, I'm at the end of doing an 18 minute video on this damn thing. All right, um, okay. So yeah, when it comes down to the creation, it is subsumed from the entire civilization, more specifically a sect of precursor civilization known as the Penitent, which were the ones that were basically left after their society started to sort of collapse and infight. It's made of a bunch of people in that respect. Yeah, it's absolutely a load of people in one. <laughs> However, 
They discuss it as they are about to create it in the sense that it is a separate being that is created from them. They use the word, um, it's a word for the shedding of a skin, right? Like oh, okay. uh, the shedding of snake skin almost. Right, right. Um, it's made from a bunch of people, but it is its own singular thing. Uh, mm. And it, it clearly has its head in the clouds somewhere else pun somewhat intended, does not really care. And I think its standards are way too high. You know, it's always about the yeah. final shape and everything. Sure, and sure. that's, I mean, you know, in some regards, that's basically what they believed its perfection to be. So like, you're never going to be able to perform with this thing to a degree where it's <laughs> going to be like, yes, this is it. Yeah, I think this, I think this is a, you have nothing to do with them. Here's a good one, Tanix. Pull them apart 10,000 different ways and they keep coming back. Uh, <laughs> hmm. That's a, that's an interesting question. He's into the rough stuff because he can't be broken. That is yeah, true. That's true. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And I'm not sure about Mary because as we all know, Tanix has no house. Yeah. Especially in this economy, you just can't, you can't think about your future <laughs> prospects, man. That's, and that's, yeah, that is yeah. correct. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's a tough one. Uh, I think it's, I think it's very much like a long-term boyfriend kind of smash, you know, like, Okay, consistently yeah. coming back for more, but at the end of the day, he's like a like he, a booty call, maybe. Yeah, he's he's a he's a he's a bad guy, but you know he's a bad guy. You're gonna go back for him, you know. You're yeah, have fun. And, I feel that. You know, it's it's fine. Here's one, Golgoroth. There are there has got to be a kink for that somewhere. <laughs> I have to imagine <laughs> with the goo pile and yeah, with the, the goo and the and the weird spindly yeah. leg tentacle things coming out of Golgoroth's uh, back. Yeah, some there. Uh, mm. Yeah. Mm. For the sake of arachnophobes alone, I'm gonna say uh, throw it into the Vex network and forget Good it call. ever existed. To the two or three people out there uh, who are of that particular Golgoroth kink, I'm so terribly sorry. You are the only people I will kink shame. <laughs> Nobody else. <laughs> Axis. Yeah. I'm, yeah. <laughs> we just talked about arachnids and all that, and we we, we went from the kind of bad one well, to the even worse one. <laughs> well, this is <laughs> this is you know half half between arachnid but it's also kind of like a robot it's type the, oh my thing. god um he's like the he, he's like the worst timeline edition of weird barbie um <laughs> it's like the, the most dreaded fate of any possible uh fallen aside from aforementioned spider things for any of those arachnophobes out there for real this is kill because they believe they have ascended into godhood by becoming a machine mm -hmm. this is an apotheosis type situation so for mm -hmm. one their standards are way up there and you're never going to be able to meet them he's an even really a god because obviously he's just a robot and secondly this thing is being quietly controlled by whatever command siva was giving at the time being so like he's not even really in control of his own nonsense like he's just kind of a <laughs> follower he's just he's a poser really you know and that's it wow. and you deserve better than that get yeah. yourself someone who is real reminder ladies and gentlemen positivity in a relationship comes in many different forms self-respect especially between yourself and your partner and everything you do is one of them true and on that basis kill axis <laughs> <laughs> and now we've come to our final option we have riven of a thousand voices man mmm I wondered when we were going to get to Riffin. Sure. I got to save the best for last, right? I think Season of the Wish has changed everything to do with this. I think this would have been somewhere in the, uh, this would have been like a smash slash kill situation. Knowing Riven now, uh, yeah. I think that there is a very strong argument to be said for Mary. Because yeah, it's one with of the, that whole so, quest line that we got there, right? Exactly. So here's the other thing, right? Ahamkara nature. She describes the way that with Taranis, she was able to step away from that enforced nature that they have, where basically it's a rat race to make sure you can feed from wishes. It's kind of a mm. gnarly forced evolutionary thing that they've evolved into. Basically, your entire life is grant wishes, grant wishes, grant wishes, and twist them so you can get sustenance. Outside of that context and removed from it, there is a moment of relief and bliss. There, which is what really makes me sit there and consider Mary in the first place. Because when you remove them from a terrible context that creates a lot of toxic trends, I think there is the potential for Riven to actually be someone who is actually not bad. She even surprises herself by the end of Season of the Wish. I am going to say Mary. Also, you know, there How will wholesome. be a sizable contingent of people who are like, yes, tentacles, and yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> like, jump in as well i suppose but this is the category and the basis i'm doing it for do as you wish i'm only judging golgoroth kink that's it 
there we go. How wholesome. And I didn't even need to DM you this picture, which I'm oh. going to send you. <laughs> I think I, 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 I think I know where this is going. Oh God. <laughs> Big shout out to Bife for being a pleasure to talk to as always. Do me a favor and go check out his channel and let me know your own answers for each of these characters, the clean version, of course, down below. Thank you very much for watching. Peace.